Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've got a quick diary by Xavier today about behavioral analysis and how it sort of relates uh, to endpoint detection and response or EDR. That's of course the latest, greatest, well, uh, maybe not quite a buzzword here that everybody is striving to. The goal is to detect not just that an odd binary runs like PowerShell, but also how it runs. For example, if a Word or another Office product started it. Now, one problem here, of course, is always false positives, like with any kind of detection rules. And Xavier has a couple of hints here. First of all, there's a project called W Asterix F Bins. This project is trying to track some of these sort of false positives. It's a little bit like the Lolbus project, as Xavier points out. That project sort of tracks Microsoft's tools that maybe abused by attackers, while uh, W Asterix F Bins is really more going after the false positives, basically uh, normal processes that may be flagged because they exhibit some of these odd behaviors. And CISA published an interesting advisory outlining a technique that's used apparently by Russian state-sponsored cyber actors in order to bypass dual two-factor authentication. The problem here is that you may have accounts registered with dual that expired. In this case, an attacker in the default configuration of a dual is able to re-enroll the device just guessing the username and password. So you're back to one factor authentication and guessing weak or using stolen passwords. This can be fixed. You have to make sure that dormant accounts cannot sort of automatically re-enroll in Duo. And that of course will block this particular attack. In addition, this particular group then took advantage of the print nightmare vulnerability, which of course has gotten a lot of attention and you hopefully have a handle on. So that's another thing to watch out for. Let me go to couple more Ukraine related uh, stories. Uh, the German Office for Information Security, kind of the German equivalent of uh, CISA, is warning users of Kaspersky products and recommending that they uninstall them and use uh, different products to secure their systems. Of course, the risk here is that any kind of uh, anti-malware product like this usually runs with uh, elevated privileges, is also usually not monitored by anything else and constantly keeps updating. So uh, that's why they recommend, uh, given the current political situation, to uh, no longer use Kaspersky. ESET is also reporting seeing yet another wiper targeting systems in the Ukraine. Uh, they uh, duped this one, Caddy Wiper, based on the name of the executable caddy.exe. And Malware Hunter team observed a fake antivirus also targeting uh, Ukraine. This fake antivirus apparently does install Cobalt Strike, so giving the attacker quite a bit of uh, possibilities here. Doesn't look like it's related to any of the existing uh, malware strains, like the wipers that we have seen before. And Chihu 360 came across an interesting uh, Linux backdoor that uses a DNS as a command and control channel. Now, DNS is nothing really new. It's sort of one of those things that seems to be uh, coming back ever so often. Haven't really seen it much sort of in a year or so. This uh, DNS uh, channel is pretty much sort of following the standard patterns of essentially encoding a string as part of the host name and then using a fixed domain in order to send uh, the requests. Should be relatively easy to spot if you're looking for long DNS queries, basically for long host names being looked up, up to 227 bytes in this case, which pretty much hits uh, the limit for host names. And apparently this particular malware is using log4j vulnerabilities in order to propagate. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.